It's my favorite time of the month. It's solicitations week. So we got the Marvel and DC solicitations released at the end of last week. Today, I'm going to be talking about Marvel comics. We're going to go into one of the releases. You should be covering, by all rights, Amazing Spider-Man 900. We're actually going to talk about Jane Foster Thor. Like, why is this character coming back? We know why the character is coming back, but I'm going to talk about that. We're going to go over Marvel comics by the numbers. How many comics are they releasing? How many number ones? What's it going to cost you if you're a Spider-Man fan? If you're an X-Man fan, how much money are you going to have to put out if you want to be a completionist? And then we'll go through all the solicitations in full, and I'll tell you about my lock of the month. The one comic book I can guarantee is actually going to be good for Marvel Comics, because unfortunately, there just isn't a whole lot here that gets me really excited. This is normally a longer video, maybe 25 to 30 minutes. So if you need to crack you open one of them silver bullets, maybe eliminate a Snapple, something like that, Get comfortable, get some refreshments, and let's have some fun talking about Marvel Comics plans for June 2022. First up, we are going to talk about Jane Foster Thor, the character that I don't think anybody wanted to come back. Certainly Jane Foster had a strong beginning, was actually well-liked, and, and was doing pretty well. The character definitely overstayed its welcome, and I don't think people, at least comic fans, are ready for the character to come back. But we obviously have Jane Foster Thor in the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder film. So we got to have a comic book to tie into it, and that's absolutely what we are getting. Jane Foster is returning as Thor this summer, taking up the reforged Mjolnir as Thor Odinson requires Jane's help from a conglomeration of his guardian villains with their sights set on the throne of the Realm Eternal. In the five-issue limited series, Jane Foster in the Mighty Thor, launching in June from Ryer Thor and Grunbeck and artist Michael Dowling, Mjolnir itself comes crash landing in Jane's apartment, dragging her into a quest to save the Odinson. By becoming Thor again to fight against villains, including Ulick the Troll, the Enchantress, and Hela the Goddess of Death. Jane was Thor for some time following the events of the story Original Sin, in which Thor Odinson becomes unworthy of lifting Mjolnir, leading Jane to take his place as the Goddess of Thunder and as a superhero. Jane's career as Thor ended with her apparent death as she hurled Mjolnir into the sun to defeat the nearly invincible monster known as Mangog. She perished upon returning to her human form, which was riddled with cancer. I'll be honest, obviously, cancer has probably affected all of our lives here. I don't like that's not a great story for me. But this, the character did have a story arc of being a hero. And it ended. And she did perish, you know, obviously within the comic books. It is comic, so everybody has to come back. But why does Jane Foster need to be a superhero? Why does she need to return to Thor? Other than the stupid movie, which I don't think a lot of comic fans are all that jazzed about anyway. And I do think there's a good chance that this is going to be the first real bomb, Bombaruski from the MCU, as it has steadily increased in notoriety and acclaim and obviously box office. I think this might be the one with the big name on it that people might just go, you know what? Kind of had enough. This might not be the one for me. Not shocked to see the character come back in comic form, but this is not for you or I. This is a comic book channel where I, I assume a vast majority of you are comic book readers. And Jane Foster Thor is not for us anymore. The character had a run. She had a story. She had a beginning, middle, and end. And she had a, uh, she had a tragic death saving people. And that is what superheroes do. There's no reason to bring the character back. There just aren't enough people that actually read comic books to warrant this even coming back at this point. My only hope is that by 2025, every major hero in the Marvel Universe will be replaced once again. They didn't already try this seven years ago. Maybe is it is it 10 years ago now? Maybe it's a little bit longer than that. Time starts to, to drag when you're reading and covering bad comic books, which is a lot of what this Jude Marvel solicitation looks like. Now let's look at the numbers. If you are a Marvel Comics fan, if you're a Marvel completionist, you're going to have to buy 80 comic books in the month of June because that's how many new issues they have coming out, 23 of which will be number one issues. 29% of all new Marvel comics being released in June 2022 will be number one issues. That's normally in between 20 and 25%, so this is definitely on the high end of that. There are a lot of number one issues coming out. If you were one of those speculators and you're like, I want to have all the number one issues for speculative value as a possible investment for the future you are going to spend 117 dollars total or five dollars and nine cents on average per issue if you just buy the a cover at the cover price that is a lot of cheddar if you want to be a speculator for marvel comics buying all the number one issues if you're a spider-man fan and you're a spider-man completionist you will have 12 new comic books starring not only peter parker but miles morales 
We've got some Spider Gwen in there, all those other derivative characters. That is 15% of all new Marvel comic books in June of 2022 will be a Spider-Man comic for a total of $56 or an average of $4.67 per issue. That is a little bit higher than we would normally expect, but we are getting Amazing Spider-Man 900 this month, which is a $10 comic book, which is actually driving up the average price of Spider-Man for the month of June. That was a little bit of an aberration, a little anomaly because we had the milestone issue. If you're an X-Men fan, you're going to have to be shelling out some more. 16, count them, 16 big X-Men comics. That is a lot of X-Men for a line that isn't exactly thriving right now. That would be 20% of all new Marvel comics will be X-Men for the month of June for a total of $70 or $4.37 per issue. Now, if you're a Star Wars fan, you got it good. Of all the, the Marvel comics fans, Star Wars fans have it the best. Eight new comic book issues being released accounting for 10% of all new Marvel comics in June 2022 for a total of $34 or only $4.25 per issue. Now, that is a good, nice, solid number. I wish they were all like that. Unfortunately, they are not. So those are your Marvel comics by the numbers. It is time to get in to the solicitations themselves. I'm going to cover what I can, the best that I can, have a little bit of fun here. Like I said, I hope you have a refreshment and definitely be watching out for my lock of the month because there's one comic book being released from Marvel in June 2022, you should put it on your pull list because I can all, I'm guaranteeing it right here that it's going to be good. So definitely be looking out for that. Now let's get to business. While there are not very many event comics going on in June 2022, we do have the beginning, or at least the prelude, to Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day in Acts Eve of Judgment number one. Apparently they're going to call Judgment Day like Acts Judgment Day, maybe. This is Kieran Gillen and Pasquale Ferry. Four dollars. That's not that bad. I'm surprised they're not bending us over on that one. So I feel like Marvel is being very generous or they realize perhaps there isn't a ton of interest in this actual comic book event. I'm personally rooting for the Eternals and the Avengers to, you know, go two on one against the, the X-Men and just destroy it. I'd say murder them all and then bring back X-Men in five years. In the past, Marvel and Fortnite have done some crossover stuff. This is certainly the most ambitious so far. There's an interesting name on there. It's Christos Gage. He is the one that did the Batman Fortnite crossover for DC Comics about a year, year and a half ago. That was exceptionally well done and very, very, very successful. You're going to get some skins and all that stuff to go along with this comic book as well. They're charging a little bit more, $6. I believe the DC one was actually $5. Essentially, we are getting a knockoff of what DC did last year with Marvel and Fortnite this time. If you're into this stuff, this is probably going to be something that you enjoy. Captain America, Sentinel Liberty number one. Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig with Carmen Canero. You know they don't want or expect this comic to be successful just because of the artist. On the number one issue, Carmen Carnero, that means they don't care. I already talked about a recent interview with Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig where they're going to basically, they're going to take Steve Rogers back to his roots and humanize him by making him learn procreate and build a community. I couldn't be less excited about this comic book. And I love Steve Rogers. He's actually my son's favorite superhero now. It used to be Spider-Man. Now it's Captain America. And I wouldn't dare show him this comic book. Captain America, symbol of truth number two. This is the one that you know they want to be successful because it's got R.B. Silva on it, an actual good comic book artist. Unfortunately, it's got Tochi Onabuchi on it, who has never really written comic books in his life other than a Black Panther's Legends series that has been absolute dog shit so far. I have no expectations for this. I will probably review the very first issue just for the cringe factor and the likelihood that it's going to be really, really bad. Otherwise, I will be taking a skip rooney on this entire series, including issue number two. Daredevil number one, the reboot that's not a reboot and a number one issue that probably never should have happened. Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto also launched the last Daredevil number one. And it's basically picking up all the same storylines that they already created. I believe Chip Zdarsky himself has said on social media, why is this a number one issue? This definitely shouldn't be, but it is in the wake of Wilson Fisk's violent and visceral last act. Sounds like he died. It's a new era for New York and the man without fear with that groundbreaking creative team. You already had the groundbreaking creative team. Get out of here. I'm going to read it because this is a fantastic creative team. Although Daredevil was trending down, Heading into Devil's Raid, in my opinion. X-Men Hellfire Gala number one, also known as Giant-Sized Hellfire Gala. Jerry Duggan, Mateo Lolly, C.F. Via, Chris Anka, and Russell Dodderman. $8 for this thing. I think I've talked about it enough. 
and I couldn't be less excited. X Men is just it's awful. Eight dollars. Get out of here. I don't care if it's seventy two pages. You should be paying me eight dollars to fucking read the damn thing, which I am gonna do reluctantly. Jane Foster and the Mighty Thor number one. I already talked about that, but it is only four dollars, so apparently they love us. Hulkling and Wicked number one, Josh Trujillo and Jody Nishijima. Six dollars for what's supposed to be the first issue of, of uh, an ongoing because it doesn't say of, but you know and I know that there's no way this is going past 12 issues. And guess who else knows that? Marvel Comics know, but they don't want to tell you this is a mini series or a maxi series from the start. There's no way this is thing is going past maxi series status. Ain't no way in hell. And that's just the way it is with Hulk and Wiccan. They're actually two characters that I think a lot of people actually like. I think they're they're just fine together. Maybe they should be superheroes again. That would be nice because I've learned enough about the relationship over the last five years. X-Men Green number two, six dollars for just absolute trash. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. This is one of the worst stories in modern comics history. Amazing Spider-Man number five, also known as Amazing Spider-Man number 899. Zeb Wells, John Romita Jr. The end of the first arc of the historic new volume is here. And you won't believe what we're pulling the web slinger through. Oh, I bet I'll believe it. Now, here's the main event, Amazing Spider-Man number six, also known as Amazing Spider-Man number 900. $10. Not shocking that they're going to bend us over on this one. They always do. It is 96 pages. We do get Zeb Wells and Ed McGinnis illustrating the entire comic book. That is an added bonus. Although, if you were going to make John Romita Jr. the ongoing artist, why isn't he illustrating this, right? One of the selling points of an ongoing is the artist as well, so I do think they're doing John Romita Jr. a little dirty here, but I don't blame them with going with Ed McGinnis because they're charging $10. And maybe you needed somebody that was a little closer to their pride. I, I get that part. The 900th issue of Amazing Spider-Man comes out the month of Amazing Spider-Man's 60th anniversary, and we are pulling out all the stops. Someone from Spider-Man's past has captured the Sinister Six and used them to create the truly terrifying Sinister Adaptoid. So essentially... They're going to make the Sinister Six into Voltron. And like one of the characters will be the arm and the other arm. And then another character will be the leg. And one of them will be the dick. And the other one will be the body and the head. And that will be the new uh, Sinister Adaptoid. It's not the worst idea ever. Of all the stuff Marvel's doing, I don't hate this. I know a lot of people do, but it does sound stupid. It sounds silly. It also sounds like something I'm going to enjoy. So I'm looking forward to this, but I'm not looking forward to spending $10 on it at all. Of all the bad comic book writers in comics, Steve Orlando is actually one of the better ones. He bats about 150, so 15 out of every 100 comic books with Steve Orlando's name on it is actually going to be worth reading. Will this be one of them? I'm not really sure. I don't think 2099 is all that cool to be good with. It's just not my bag. Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number four with another artist. Shocking. And what I said before applies here as well. Spider-Man tw- Exodus number five. Okay, we've had enough. Thor 26, Dottie Cates and Martin Kokolo. So we got no Nick Klein on this one. Banner of War Part 4. I'm going to be honest. I am taking Thor off until Banner of War starts, which I think might actually be next month anyway. I've kind of had enough of Dottie Cates' Thor at this point. But I do have high hopes for Banner of War, the Thor-Hulk crossover. Dottie is a good writer. A lot of times I like what he's doing, but he's kind of lost me with his Thor stuff. Hopefully this is going to be great. Thor and Hulk's epic rivalry continues in the fourth installment of the character's 60th anniversary crossover celebration. Only $4. Hulk number eight, Banner of War finale. Martin Kokolo, Gary Frank covers. Man, why did DC let that guy go? The time for victory has come in the final installment of the economic crossover between Hulk and Thor. Marvel's two heaviest hitters expend their rage on one final brutal brawl that will answer once and for all which of these heroes is the strongest. It's Hulk. Janice Vale, Captain Marvel number one, Peter David, Juan and Ramirez. This is one of those throwbacks to 90s continuity. I have really enjoyed these, although I'm not as big a fan of Janice Vell as I am some of the other characters that Peter David has done. I will check it out just because I enjoy what he's been doing with these. $5 is a little steep, I think, for this series, but I'm going to give it a shot. Defenders Beyond, number one of five, Al Ewing, Javier Rodriguez. I actually like the Defenders. But this doesn't look like the Defenders that I know. Is that the Defenders? Is that your Defenders team? That's not my Defenders team. Al Ewing and Javier Rodriguez fall up their acclaimed Defenders There Are No Rules series with a new volume and an all-new lineup, including none other than Loki, God of Stories. With Doctor Strange since a dire warning from beyond the grave, 
Blue Marvel, America Chavez, Taya Galactus's mom, Tiger and Loki assemble to defend reality itself. Nah, I'm good. This team, um, this team sucks. There are a couple of decent characters in there, but for the most part, <laughs> wild cards, drawing of cards, number one of four, Paul Cornell, Mike Hawthorne. Mike Hawthorne is doing some of the worst art I've ever seen on his life in that Wonder Woman evolution story. Now, it is a Stephanie Phillips comic, so I don't blame him for not putting out any effort. And I don't blame DC if they said, you know what, Mike, I'm sorry. Whatever your normal page rate is, we're going to half it because we know this story isn't going to sell. So I have little to no faith that this will actually look good. But this is from George R. Martin. He actually wrote comics back in the day. He actually pitched a version of the Red Wedding in the DC Universe. Obviously, these are his creations and his characters being adapted to Marvel Comics. $5 for a bunch of stuff I'm not all that interested in with an artist, I think, is nowhere near good enough to be illustrating Marvel or DC Comics at this point in his career. I think I'll pass. Miles Morales and Moon Girl number one, Mahali Mushigo and Iguara. $5 one shot. I, I couldn't care about Moon Girl. You can't do it to me. Thor, Lightning and Lament number one, Ralph Macchio, Todd Knock. This is a 32 page one shot for $4. Yeah, I'll probably give it a shot. I mean, obviously, it's not all that important because it's a one shot, but I'll give it a look see and, and see what happens in here. The Variants number one of five, Gail Simone and Phil Dodo. That does not sound like a very good uh, pairing to me. Apparently, it's just going to be Jessica Jones is all these different heroes in the Marvel Comics universe. I mean, the one thing that this does have as a selling point is that it's original. We haven't seen any other Marvel female heroes cosplay as every other hero in the Marvel Comics universe. That's the selling point, folks. I ain't sold. Clobbering time number one of five, Steve Skrokey. Writing and illustrating, it's clobbering time all the time as Ben Grimm teams up with heroes from across the Marvel Universe for big fist-pounding action. Ooh, fist-pounding, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. This could be okay if this was like Daniel Warren Johnson or something, but I, I don't know no, about this guy. Maybe he's good. If he's good, let me know, because this is something I would read. I don't mind some indie-style art with the right creator, you know what I mean? I don't know if this Steve guy is the one for me, though. Let me know. Ant-Man, one of five, Al Ewing, Tom Riley. This is basically the 60th anniversary of Ant-Man, where we're going to you know, go throughout history and celebrate the original Ant-Man all the way to the new Ant-Man that's going to be in the future. I'm going to read this one. I like Ant-Man. I don't love him, but I do like him enough, and Tom Riley's a good artist. Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number one, Taboo and B. Earl and Juan Ferreira. I love Juan Ferreira as an artist, but I believe this comic book has already been delayed. Iron Cat, one of five, Jed McKay and Perry Perez. I like Jed McKay. I think he does a good job, but this cover alone makes me never want to read this comic book. Marvel Voices Pride, number one. I don't read anthologies, and I don't read a comic book that's like Christopher Cantwell, Andrew Wheeler, Alyssa Wong, Grace Freud. Nah. Danny Lore, double dot. Max Strike, Monster Hunters, number one. Christos Gage and Paco Diaz. I really like Christos Gage. He's really good. If you are unaware, he and his wife wrote the first season of Daredevil on Netflix. He also has a really good Ninja K series, so I'll check this out just because it's him. But the idea itself, I couldn't find less interesting. Thunderbolts, two of five. New Fantastic Four, number two, Peter David and Alan Robinson for $4. This is another one of those 90 throwbacks. I'm going to be reading all of these, although we'll see what happens with this one. This has that weird Fantastic Four team with Wolverine, Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Spider-Man. Savage Avengers, number two, David Beppos, Carlos Magno. I really like the first series, but I don't see it translating you know it's obviously it's got a different writer and everything so yeah punisher war journal blitz number one tour and grombeck lawn medina i like Milan medina a lot i don't understand like why is there a punisher war journal with him in like the new outfit like that doesn't make sense like is that what punisher war journal is supposed to be i thought these were old stories stuff like that it's kind of stupid gambit two of five Chris Claremont, Sid Cotier. I'm absolutely going to be reading the Chris Claremont Gambit throwback series, and I'm very excited for it. This should be really, really good. Knights of X number three, Teeny Howard, Bob Quinn. You couldn't pay me. Legion of X number three, Cy Spurrier and Jan Bazulia. I really like the way of X, so. And a rocky fugitive god is lurking somewhere in the shadows of Krakoa. Man, I'm already sold, Bella. This is going to be good. If you're looking for something to read that's X-Men, that's not going to make you want to hurl, I think this is, this is probably the one. X-Men Legends number two, Roy Thomas, Dave Walker. Yeah, absolutely. I will be reading this one. Love to see Roy Thomas returning. The man is more derided than he deserves to be for everything he's done just for Marvel Comics. X-Force 29, Ben Percy, Robert Gill. 
I'm going to give it a shot, but I might be out of the Ben Percy business. New Mutants 27, Vidai Hala Rodriguez. Immortal X-Men number four, Kieran Gill and Michelle Banditti. This is your Hellfire Gala variant editions. You're going to have plenty of these all over the X-Men comics. I think Immortal X-Men sounds really like a stupid idea. I don't think the Quiet Council is all that interesting, a concept or an organization. And I certainly don't think there should be a comic book dedicated just to it. Excellent number five. Sabretooth 505, Victor Laval and Leonard Kirk. What's interesting is the first issue is balls out nuts. And it's so bloody and gory and violent. You're like, yeah, this is a Sabretooth comic. Then you get to the second issue, and it's like, who the fuck wrote this? Raymo Ruel? Like, I don't get where we, how did we get here? After the first issue and get to the second issue, I'm going to say that the second issue is probably a, a harbinger of things to come. And this is one that I won't be sticking around to the end of. x Men Red number four. Al Ewing, Juan Cabal, and others. Al Ewing had a chance to do something good with S.W.O.R.D. It never really got anywhere. Hopefully this does something. But I'm not overly interested on the Iraqi mutants on Mars. I don't think that's even a cool concept either. Wolverine 22. Ben Percy and Adam Kubert. Well, Adam Kubert's really good. Don't know that I need Deadpool in a Wolverine comic, but I'll probably read it for the art. Marauders number four. I'm not interested in Somnus or anything else Steve Orlando has to say about X-Men. X-Men 12, Jerry Duggan, Pepe Larraz. This thing has been one of the most uneven X-Men runs ever. Are we going to have our new X-Men team already on this one? Why would you have a new X-Men team after 12 issues? It'll be that one, Marvel Comics. Wolverine, patch number four or five, Larry Hama, Andrea DeVito. I love Wolverine. I love old school Larry Hama. This is I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm going to read it. X-Men 92, Venom Lethal Protector number four or five, David Michelini, Ivan Fiorelli, Absolutely going to be reading this. This is another one of those throwbacks. These are the best thing Marvel has going. This is the most consistent content that Marvel Marvel are producing right now are bringing back classic creators, writing stories in continuity 30 years ago. And they're fantastic. Spider-Gwen Gwenverse. Or what if Miles Morales? Wow, we maybe that Jessica Jones variance idea wasn't quite as clever or original as I let on when I was being sarcastic earlier. Venom number died. Ray and V, Brian Hitch. I'm liking this series to a degree, but I'm not loving it. But there's no reason for me to stop it. It says King the Con- Conqueror is going to have a front row seat. I'll probably check that out. Carnage number four. I'm just not interested in this one, unfortunately. I do love Ram V, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking this one off. I know it came out this week, but at this point, it doesn't even matter if it's good. I just don't care. Savage Spider-Man number five, Joe Kelly, Gerardo Sandoval. This is a pretty gross version of Spider-Man. If you like gross Spider-Man, this is absolutely comparable for you. It's a good read. It's got some disgusting art. Be warped. Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Avengers Forever, number seven. Jason Aaron and Aaron Cooter. Jason Aaron should never, ever get to write a team book ever again. He is not made for this. Avengers 57, Jason Aaron, Javier Garode. You could just take what I said and roll it into this thing. And these are the stupid Hellfire variant covers. I, If you like this stuff, I'm glad you like it. This does nothing for me at all. Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood, 3 of 4. Anna Sinti, Erica Schultz, Jim Zub. $5 for 12 pages of Anna Sinti. Maybe 15 pages of Anna Sinti. Probably not worth it. Moon Knight, number 12. Jade McKay and Alessandro Capuccio. This thing is badass. This is the best ongoing Marvel Comics have at the moment. You should be reading this. If you aren't, you are a fool. This thing is fantastic. Strange, number 4. Jed McKay, Marcelo Ferreira. I think I'm all right. I didn't like that first issue. Black Panther, number 7. John Ridley, Stefano Landini. This thing is like really, really good. I'm shocked because I think John really is not a very good writer. But, man, he's got like a really – he's dialed in what he wants to do with T'Challa, and it's actually really interesting. If you aren't reading it, you might want to give it a check. Ghost Rider number five, Ben Percy, Corey Smith. I'm definitely reading this one. I really like the first issue. The art was fantastic, and I like where Ben Percy is potentially taking this. Fantastic 445, Dan Slott, Andrea DeVito. The Reckoning War epilogue. Wow. Reckoning War is still going on. What a – Captain Carter, 4 of 5, Jamie McKelvey. Iron Fist, 5 of 5, Alyssa Wong, Michael Eag. Shang-Chi, 13, Gene Yang, Marcus Toe. Shang-Chi goes undercover after a brutal terrorist attack involves a five-weapon society agent. Five-weapon society is actually a pretty good name. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's actually pretty dope. Iron Man Hellcat Angel, number 1, Chris Cantwell. $5 to see Iron Man metaphorically have his nuts removed. I'm all right. Iron Man 21, another $4 to see his nuts removed. The Marvels, number 12, Kurt Busiek. 
Deadpool Bad Blood number four. This is the final issue of that Daredevil graphic novel that they had that they're splitting into four parts. This is something you might like. Definitely check it out if you're a Rob Liefeld fan. Captain Marvel 39. She-Hulk number five. Maestro World War M number 505, Peter David Sebastian Cabral. This is my lock of the month. Lock it up. This is absolutely going to be the best damn comic book Marvel comic put out in June of 2022. When you can live forever, what does it mean to live? In this shocking series finale, Maestro finds himself partnered with an old enemy against an even older allies to determine once and for all the true ruler of dystopia. But optimism depends on knowing how your opponents think and someone's failed to account for a few tricks. Yes, please. My only issue with this comic book is that this is the third part of a trilogy. I wish it would go on forever. Alien Annual number one. Man, I really wish they would have found a new artist not named Salvador La Roca. Can't they get one of the, the really good alien artists from Dark Horse to come back? It would help, but I'll read it because I like Alien. We're into the Star Wars content. Star Wars The Mandalorian number one. Rodney Barnes, George Genty. I like Rodney Barnes. He does really good horror stuff. I don't know what he's going to be able to do here, but for $5... I don't like the Mandalorian that much. I know a lot of people love it. I think uh, it was merely okay. Star Wars Han Solo and Chewbacca number four. Mark Guggenheim, David Mesita. Still, probably still going to be reading this one, but I'm not excited that they brought the Wookiee from the Mandalorian into Han Solo and Chewbacca. Like, does nothing for me as far as these characters. Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, Chris Cantwell. That's so sad. Star Wars 25. I'm surprised they're not treating this like a straight up, I don't know, uh, I don't know, Milestone or something. With stories set from the prequel to the sequel eras, experience new tales of Obi-Wan and Anakin, Darth Vader, Poe Dameron, and Kylo Red. Join Charles Sewell along with his previous artistic collaborators for this era spading celebration. At least there's no Ray in there, you know what I mean? Shocking. Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 24. If you're going to read an ongoing Star Wars comic, this is the one to read. This is the best one. Star Wars Dr. Aphra. Star Wars Darth Vader number 24. I don't know what they did to Greg Pak. But I think he's underneath the island of Krakoa, and he's been replaced by a plant person. Those are your Marvel Comics solicitations for June of 2022. Thankfully, we've got those 90s throwback issues that we can go and read. Those things are a lot of fun. I wish they were longer than five issues each. But I do think making them smaller uh, and more contained has really helped them out in the long run. Definitely going to be reading a few of those series out there, but it's mostly garbage. It's Jane Foster, Thor, and a bunch of other crap you don't want to read. Speaking of that, if you want more information on what is bound to be an enormous train wreck, you've got to watch this video where I take apart this interview from Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing about their upcoming Steve Rogers Captain America run. This thing is going to be awful, and you can tell just by what they have to say about the stories.